Good evening, everyone. Time for another Bitcoin report. Here is the chart from Clark Moody of Bitcoin. You can see we ran today to $78, uh, as I predicted, and I'm standing by my prediction. We're not going to get a significant correction until around the $100 or so mark. That's my best guess. And then we'll probably see a violent correction, uh, possibly back to 50 But you can see, I think if we do the technicals here, we've got a support ledge right here at about 73 and a half to 74 and a half and uh, I suspect we're probably going to rally here one of the reasons I say this is because of the buying volume uh, much much of the volume is buying volume then you get little trickles of selling volume everybody trying to catch a top uh, but being rapidly overcome by new buyers coming in and uh, that's a very important story um, that I'll go to right now and uh, that is uh, was posted on the blog. Uh, you can see this is a post on BitcoinTalk.org from Magical Tux. Uh, Magical Tux is the guy who's the uh, guy in charge of Mt. Gox, the primary Bitcoin exchange. That's where you're seeing those dollar Bitcoin prices. Now, certainly not the only Bitcoin exchange, but it is the main one. If Mt. Gox went away, of course, uh, a dozen others would spring up to take its place. So that's not really that important. But what is important is what uh, Magical Tux is reporting is that, he says, as many of you noticed, the price of Bitcoin increased. The main impact we had here at Mt. Gox before the price increase is increase the number of accounts, which means more new accounts to verify every day and more support requests. We're currently doubling the support staff at Mt. Gox. Should have new staff hired somewhere in April, hopefully. He goes on and talks about uh, roughly a backlog, um, a thousand new account requests on Friday, but. Uh, I think he said uh, if you go into the, you can click this and go into the forum thread. I think he, they're backlogged now about 5,000 accounts. Now, the backlog, of course, is because of FinCEN. And we're going to talk about that next. Uh, FinCEN has the Know Your Customer anti money laundering laws. Mt. Gox has been in compliance with those for years. Uh, when I first got into Bitcoin and first bought some on Mt. Gox, way back in 2011, uh, I had to verify my account so that's nothing new but of course uh, we're dealing with the extreme fudsters and uh, shills trolls disinformation specialists uh, so they're out in full force as the price of Bitcoin rises so let's go to one of those stories this is a story uh, about uh, online gambling and this is from uh, online casinos.com uh, this is on the blog as well uh, there once was this yellow brick road that was paved with bitcoins, a virtual currency that promised a new era in online gambling payment possibilities. Well, anything that bucks the trend, in this case rocks the financial boat, is soon, enough, soon to be probed and investigated in order for the authorities to make sure there isn't anything illegal going on. Recently, the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network of the U.S. Treasury published its new guidelines for the regulation and use of virtual currencies such as bitcoins. Operators that use bitcoins as currency have to comply with U.S. Treasury's accounting requirements, mandatory reporting for BTC transactions involving transfers of $10,000 or more. Now, that's nothing new. Uh, $10,000 transactions have been reported, whether it's Bitcoin or anything else. The recent surge in the value of Bitcoins and the volume of coins traded has sent the alarm bells ringing in the halls of the Treasury Department. Regulation, supply, blah, 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 blah. So you can see here, online gambling with Bitcoin still illegal. That's a headline. Of course, that's patently false. Um, uh, FinCEN was very clear that uh, people who mine their own coins uh, are, are not subject at all. They're users. Uh, then obviously people who trade with each other are users and people who gamble with bitcoins are users. These are not currencies. Now why is onlinecasinos.com concerned about it? Because they're interested in making dollar profits. Well, too bad. Uh, there's already seals with clubs. They've recovered from a massive, massive um, DDoS attack. They've uh, come up with a new site, and guess what? Look at that. You've got 357 players online. I've tracked this very closely. I don't play a lot, just for fun, 
But uh, 357 players, that's the largest number I've ever seen. You can uh, read the stories about the DDoS attack. So there's a little bit of the FUD and disinformation. Uh, there is nothing illegal about playing games online with your Bitcoins, whether it's Satoshi Dice or uh, poker at Seals with Clubs or anything else. There's absolutely no evidence uh, that any laws have been passed that affect that at all. FinCEN laws, again, are about transferring dollars. And uh, so that's that story. Let's go to another story here. A big, big story. Uh, Mike Adams, the guy over at Natural News. Now a lot of people have criticized him for being involved with Alex Jones and stuff like that. I like Mike Adams. I like his message, especially that uh, the uh, globalists, the uh, the uh, GMO seed people and all the rest are basically trying to kill everyone. I absolutely agree with that. And it's great to see that Mike Adams over at Natural News now accepting Bitcoins. That's a big story. Uh, next story, huge story. And of course, the Fudsters and disinformation specialists are out there trying to discredit this story. Uh, Jeff Berwick of the Dollar Vigilante has announced that he is going to locate a Bitcoin ATM in Cyprus. Now, um, as some people have criticized the story because there's apparently a picture of that. I think someone photoshopped that. doesn't matter. But uh, Jeff Berwick is a stand-up guy, so let's read this. This was posted to PR Web. Also, was just covered by Reason.com, so it's legit. Jeff Berwick, founder of Stockhouse.com and CEO of the Dollar Vigilante Media, announced Monday his plan to open the world's first Bitcoin ATM in Cyprus, citing the ongoing bank bailout, bank closures, and capital controls now being pushed in that country. According to Berwick, who sold Stockhouse last decade, which at the peak of the tech bubble was worth $240 million, Bitcoin ATM has the world's first software enabling a two-way automated Bitcoin market. Last Friday, Cyprus announced a new bailout, all-inclusive of levy of upwards of 15.26% on all deposits, etc. So, big, big news. I don't know what the logistics are for Jeff to do this. I don't know what the laws are, but I, I assume uh, that Jeff has investigated those. So, that is also fantastic news. Uh, let's go over to the forum. Now, the, the uh, Bitcoin sweepstakes is still on. Uh, you can win 50 Litecoins or the Bitcoin equivalent. Uh, it, it's going to be the price on 329 at midnight. And uh, that's going to be from Mt. Gox. Uh, I'm just going to refresh that price. And you can just uh, base your bids on this uh, price. You'll find that on Mt. Gox. You can see there are a lot of predictions that have already come in. and uh, But you can go over to the forum. Uh, again, you can find the forum if you go to the Bitcoin channel, the blog, and uh, there will be a link in the upper left-hand corner where you can click on forums right up here, and uh, that will take you to the forums. You can sign up and uh, get in on that. And I uh, just want to thank everybody who's supporting the blog. Uh, it's, it's growing very rapidly as the Bitcoin story uh, breaks and uh, I try to cover all of the breaking news. This is a very, very good uh, video at the top here. Uh, I encourage you to listen to this. Uh, Wu Joe, I think is the guy's name, and he's covering Cliff High, and uh, very good analysis uh, with the Bitcoin. And so it looks like we may be rallying here. Let's, let's do a refresh, and uh, let's go into the 15-minute here. So we've seen a lot of volatility. This is the type of thing that we see. Uh, these spikes down met with a lot of buying interest, uh, result in spikes up. Then, of course, the market tests uh, down. The selling volume is very, very light if you look at the amount of buying. And that's consistent with the story from Mt. Gox that there is a flood of people coming in. And, of course, that's to be expected. It's not that easy to link your bank account to one of these places and now you can use BitInstant or some of the others you're gonna pay a decent uh, percentage fee so if you want to just pay 1% roughly uh, you're gonna have to set up a bank wire again there are no regulations against that it's been going on for years uh, you can go to Mt. Gox you can sign up an account 
I, I believe now you actually have to scan in your driver's license but really that's not any different than opening up uh, another account say gold money or something like that there's a lot of accounts that are overseas that uh, the US has been uh, tightening up on the restrictions so Bitcoin accounts are really no different these are just standard anti money laundering laws so uh, the a lot of the FUD is just uh, just that uh, fear uncertainty doubt that they're trying to inject into this market to keep people from getting into it so I wanted to discuss that a little bit in depth here because uh, so much of the FUD is about this FinCEN anti-money anti laundering idea. So I want to just uh, take this analogy and draw it out here. You can imagine that a, uh, a money laundry basically is like your laundromat here. People bring in their clothes. The analogy is money. They bring it in. They put it in. They wash it. They bring it back out. Uh, that's what you do with a money laundromat. You take your money in there, you wash it around in some legitimate business or some legitimate concern, you trade around a little bit, you take it back out, and then you have your clean money. Dirty money is going to be money that is proceeds from criminal enterprises. Uh, so criminals, of course, are going to try to hide their profits. Uh, they're going to put up a lot of red flags if they're making profits from crime. And... Uh, uh, that's what FinCEN is looking for. So you can imagine uh, FinCEN is going to be somebody sitting here watching the laundromat, watching people coming in, putting their clothes in, watching what they're doing, pulling their clothes out. Now, why am I bringing up this analogy? Because the movement of money into Bitcoin is not this laundromat at all. It's not at all a laundromat. Uh, the, the analogy is the clothes or the dollars. Uh, if you would imagine, there's another shop right next door to this laundromat, and that's a used clothing store, and people are coming in, and they're selling their clothes, and that's the equivalent of dollars. Uh, the dollars they get there, that's actually the equivalent of Bitcoin. So you notice that you won't have any FinCEN agents posted at the uh, thrift store next door where people come in and sell their clothes. Why? Because they're not laundering them. They're not changing the state of them they're not trying to deceive anybody about it they're coming in they're dumping their clothes they're getting money and they're leaving they're done with their clothes same thing with bitcoin when you come in to one of these exchanges mount gox or any of the others you're not coming in well at least myself and i suspect probably 90 to 95 percent of the people involved they are not coming in to try to put their dollars into bitcoins then slosh them around buy and sell and then pull them back out that's not what's going on these are people who are coming into the thrift store next door they're getting rid of their clothes they're getting rid of their dollars they're getting their bitcoins and they're leaving they're done they're out of the system uh, I have no intention whatsoever of uh, selling any of my bitcoins for dollars at this point now I'm trading my bitcoins for some litecoins at some point I will probably begin transacting in what I believe will be the next uh, digit of the currency which will be the Satoshi or the BitCent uh, which is now roughly about 70 cents so the Satoshi is already almost a dollar and you can imagine uh, if Bitcoin runs, as I predicted, to about $100 very soon here, then one Satoshi is going to equal $1. Uh, at that point, a lot of the people who have been mining Bitcoins, buying Bitcoins uh, since 2 or 10 or whenever we pointed this thing out years ago, they're going to have a lot of Satoshis. So it's not going to be a matter of dumping them all and doing this or that. It's going to be a matter of actually using them as a functional unit of currency, whether that is buying a virtual good, buying a real good, buying another virtual currency, all of those activities are not, I repeat, those are not activities that FinCEN is interested in. FinCEN is interested in stopping criminals from laundering illegal proceeds. They're not interested in stopping people who want to convert to Bitcoin and to begin using that. Now, I'm not saying the government is not interested in that. The government may very well be very threatened or interested in that, but that's not the role of FinCEN. They're basically saying, well, that's not my job. That's someone else's job. So if you're worried about capital gains in the Bitcoin, that the IRS, that's your job. Uh, if you're interested in uh, 
controlling world currencies, Federal Reserve, that's your job. But FinCEN, our job is to make sure money laundering isn't happening, and we've done that. That's why we have given a clarification. And if you're a user and you're interested in mining the coins and you're interested in trading the coins and you're interested in trading virtual goods and you're interested in trading real goods, as long as you're not going back and forth uh, between bitcoins and dollars, we really don't care what you do with your bitcoin. So that's my understanding of that ruling. I think I'm correct, but we'll wait for more clarification. Uh, my analogy to that is silver. Uh, as you probably know, I also have a silver channel for physical silver, recommending that people protect themselves from the coming hyperinflation uh, using physical silver and gold. Now, I've done a number of videos where people have asked, well, what about selling your silver? What about selling your gold? And I've said explicitly, that uh, you probably don't want to sell your silver for dollars or your gold for dollars. Uh, one of the reasons why is because if you look back in history, the hyperinflation that occurred in uh, Weimar, Germany, uh, you had a period of time where people who had made 10,000% gain on their precious metals, if, if they sold them for Reichsmarks, six months later, they were 99% wiped out. So uh, it's very risky when you're on a borderline hyperinflation or in a hyperinflation to jump in and out of something that has value back for the currency that is going to zero. So I'm not going back into dollars with my bitcoins. I have no intent of doing that. I don't think that 95% of the people who are into bitcoin are going back into dollars. I don't think they have any intent. It's a one-way street. It's from dollars into bitcoins and that's going to propel the price uh, much, much higher. We've had the last two to three years to test the validity of the Bitcoin. It's come under massive attack from uh, every kind of direction. It's in essence uh, like the program or various programs that Bill Gates put up in the past on the internet said, here it is, here's the server, here's the software, go ahead and hack it. It was hacked in five minutes. So Bitcoin has been up there for two to three years for all the hackers, all the governments, everyone to attack it. They have failed. No one has succeeded in breaking Bitcoin. Uh, they've done a lot of things. They've hacked the exchange. They've hacked wallets. They've used uh, sneaker net uh, to uh, get passwords. They've done everything conceivable to attack the Bitcoin, but they have not broken the Bitcoin protocol or any of the essential elements of the Bitcoin. It still stands, and that's why the price is rocketing higher. So. To me, it's a simple uh, case. It's a one-way street. Uh, the, the lines are backed up around the corner uh, for uh, Mt. Gox and the others. I probably would guess to get money into Bitcoins and out of dollars, into Bitcoins and out of Euros, into Bitcoins and out of Rubles, uh, away from government-controlled fiat dissolving, destructing paper currencies and a way to get into stable virtual currencies. Uh, that's the way the tide is moving. And I believe that uh, when that tide begins to become a flood, you're going to see a price on the Bitcoin that you won't even believe. And we'll talk to you next time.